popcorn ready. Yes, sir. <laughs> Get your popcorn ready podcast. Hatchy Hatch is in the building. Yep, yep. <laughs> T.O. is in the building. And guess who else we got in the building? D.K. Metcalf is, is in, in the, the building. building. Yeah. D.K. Metcalf in the building. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? Appreciate you coming on, brother. I appreciate y'all for having me. Out yeah. here in L.A., living the life right now. Ooh, off season, going on number five. How you doing, man? Enjoying man. it? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I mean, I know T.O. will probably be getting tired of me uh, hitting him up <laughs> and stuff. So, um, nah, nah, you... I got the utmost respect for him. So, he he helped me through this journey. That's nah, awesome. You know, it, That's it's, awesome. It's, it's, it's all good for me. I'm very receptive. You know, like I said, we saw each other. We met each other, like, right before the draft right. um, we were going into that I was coming out of the hotel you was coming in the hotel and like I said I had heard about you uh, seen the highlights um, like I said you about to embark upon upon the journey that you're on now mm-hmm. and so uh, obviously like I said the first thing I I noticed was the size because yeah. everybody always talked about the size you know yeah. obviously we know about the speed we, ne- we didn't get to see that till you start playing but what has been the hardest transition or maybe the easiest transition coming from college to the pros? Um, I would say the hardest transition probably would be managing my time. Um, mm, all your free time yeah, that you have. all my free time, yep. yeah, especially during the off-season. Um, you know, ain't nobody telling you to wake up and go to meetings or yep. go to workouts, so you pretty much on your own. So yeah. my first couple of years, it was really just trying to figure that out and trying to uh, get a routine and get a team around me and build a team around me to – help the off-season go smooth. And right. probably the easiest thing would probably be just playing football because mm. I thought it was going to be harder. I thought, you know, people were going, you know, just give me – I thought it was just going to be more challenging than, right. than college. But but I mean, your dad, though, I mean, let's talk about your dad mm-hmm. and his, his you know, <coughs> path, right. path yep. and development of you, though. Right. Um. Well, I got to watch my pops play in the league and go <laughs> right. to a exactly. Super Bowl right. and – you got to see uh, it, feel it, right. touch it before exactly. you were there. And then be around great players like Brian Erlacher, Thomas Jones, Charles Tillman. So, yeah. I mean, he just had the right people around me growing up. So mm. I, pr- I seen it was just pretty pretty easy to transition from right. college um, and, you know, get to the league because I've always been a professional. I've been around it for so long. And there you go. I, I had no choice but to, you know, mold myself and, and be that. Right. So, again, I would try to tell the youngsters today, you talk to a lot of kids, I'm sure, and trying to get the parents and the kid and the circle that's around you to understand. If this is what your goal is, that's fine, but everybody has to be on board. So speak to, like, the parents that are listening. Like, what can they do to help their kid kind of, you know, help their dream come true? Because they're all obvious part of the process, whether it's paying for stuff in high school and helping them decide on what college to go to. Um, I would say to, I mean, everybody's journey is different, right. first off. So, um, you know, just what works for me may not work for the next person. But um, a support system, you know, around you while you're going on this journey um, I would say it's very valuable, but at the same time, you also got to want it for yourself. Mm. Um, like your parents can't want it more than you. Uh, you all, you mm. have to want it yourself and you have to wake up and you that's have to so put real. in the work your own, on your own if you want to make it. Um, yep. And I think that's just what separates everybody else, the great ones from the good ones. Yep. Kids, the did y'all hear that? <laughs> Kids across the country. Listen again. <laughs> did you not hear what he just said? We as parents, we cannot want it more for than you. you. Yeah. For you or more than you. That's a big thing. Yeah. Because the parents understand what social media is and the parents understand what playing at Alabama and Ole Miss is, but the kid really doesn't understand it. So Looking at this highlight, you should have scored put, right there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I should have. So the parents try to put all of that onto the kid, and maybe the kid's not ready for that, you know? So what do you say to those kids who are maybe trying to get out of the shadow of their parents or maybe not follow their parents' dreams and follow their own? Um well, it's your life at the end of the day, so you can't yeah. listen to nobody else or, or try to, yeah. you know, put anybody else's stipulations on yourself because then, you know, you live in their life and you ain't living your you life. You won't so, be happy, yeah. And I'm, I, my pops uh, taught me at a young age to be my own person. I, I say it's a gift and a curse because, you know, I, I'm, I'm my own person too much to where <laughs> I'm, I'm stubborn sometimes and I always yeah. want to do stuff my way. But, yeah. um, man, I would just say just be selfish with who you are on your time because mm. at the end of the day, when, when you look yourself in the mirror, Ain't nobody else going to be around you. That's like, all it's you. All, it's all on you. It's all you. Let's take us back on a little journey. Again, 2015, high <clears> school, <throat> right? You were one of the superstars. I obviously played at the Nike opening as well. It was on Lunar Beast. We were looking at some pictures earlier. So what do you remember? Like, what's some of the relationships, like, you took away from, like, your high school experience? Um, 
I would just say how many of us are in the league right now. Um, right. Wow. I, I remember just going to camps with with a lot of people that I still play against. Uh, you know, to this day, like mm -hmm. I mean, Rashawn Gary was the number one player in, That's in our right. class. Um, yep. Jeffrey Simmons, AJ Brown, yep. uh, Jalen Hurts. So it was like we we all grew up together and came up together and just saw each other mature and just mm -hmm. you just start to become happy for everybody that's that's right. having success and right. uh, man, you just. Yep. And just enjoy the journey. That's do you, all do you guys still talk to each other and talk? Because, yeah. again, that, a lot of people don't understand. They look at NFL players like, oh, you guys just go to practice. You go home and you go hang out. Like, no, you go through stuff, but you also need each other to go, th to go through those things. Like, exactly. how important is that, those bonding relationships with other team, other pr pretty much people on other teams and your own team? Yeah, right. so not only just going through stuff, right. but growing. Yes. Right. Yes. Growing through stuff yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's, it's very valuable because, um, you know, me and AJ were going through the same contract situations yep. at the same time. So mm. me leaning on him, him leaning on me uh, through it, through it all, just just knowing that you have somebody that, that you're not going through, you know, a tough time by yourself alone. Right, right. And just having people like that around you who, who uh, number one, support you, and number two, can relate to, you know, what you're going through. I mean, it just makes life easier. It just just right. makes life worth fighting for because, you know, you're not going through anything alone. Like, you right. always got somebody right there by your side. Um, and I would say AJ's just been there every step of the way ever since we, we first met each other. Not met, not met each other, but we're teammates in college. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Just up until this point, like, that's, that's yeah. my dog. And explain, yeah. too, like, some of the viewers, especially a lot of the fans, like, when, you know, there's contract negotiation, negotiations going on. And, you know, like I said, you may be in your last year um, – you're having to really navigate and process, okay, do I hold out? You're talking to, obviously, you know, your dad, you know, Terrence Metcalf played with the Chicago Bears for a number of years. And do you lean on him going through this process? Now you're a grown adult, you know what I mean? Like you said earlier, you know, managing your time, trying to figure out, okay, now I'm a grown adult. These are things that I, I, you know, I have an agent. You know, you discuss some of these things. But a lot of the fans, they don't realize – really what really goes into the contract negotiations. There's a lot of stress that that's in that's involved with that. Because at the end of the day, you as an athlete, you know what you deserve, you know what your market value is. You know the you know, kinda understanding the business, business and where they're trying to save money in a sense and they're trying to evaluate your your market value based on somebody else's. Take us through probably like you said, what you went through, even like you said, leaning on AJ, him going through that process and then having you like, you know, okay, I may be in Seattle and I may not be in Seattle. Right. You've established a bond with your teammates, the city, obviously the fans. Yeah. And as an athlete, you don't want to leave, you know what I mean? But if if the negotiations don't go the way that they need to go, and you, you gotta get, leave. You, you get your market value, <laughs> you gotta leave. Right. Tell us, kind of explain a little bit of like the ebb and flow of emotions that goes through that? Uh, well, first off, uh, going into last season, uh, I came off a broken foot. So that was one thing I, I had to deal with off the rip. And secondly, it's like you got to understand that the team is doing everything not to pay you. Mm. And you are just fighting for why they should pay you. <laughs> so once I understood right. that, like last year was the, the toughest time for me because I had to – put away the relationship side of everything that I had with everybody Man, in the building right. and just mm -hmm. turn everything into a business mindset. <laughs> and Right, and this is it, which is so crazy because up until this point, everything has been a union. You know what I mean? You're coming into practice every day. Everything is good. Me, you're Pete talking to the manager. You're talking John to the Snyder, head coach, Pete Snyder. Snyder. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's happy. Everybody's until. happy until <laughs> now they got to bring out the pocketbook. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? The wallet. You know, yeah, they got to write the check. This. Right. See what this That's what about. I again. I want people to understand, especially fans, because they're they're so quick to criticize yeah. a player for being greedy. You know, you're getting paid millions of dollars. You should be you should happy be satisfied. You, paid, you should be yeah. happy, but they don't understand. Like I said, what it takes to be who you are on the field. Like you said, you're grinding it out. You're playing with a broken foot. You know, pretty much. You're you're really risking your life, your 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 livelihood, yeah. trying to help the team. But then right. when it's time, for the team to help you, for the team to help you, <laughs> there's no love, right. there's no loyalty. I mean, I loyalty. think the the Mar Hamlin situation, you know, wow. mm, put it in perspective. Like, it's everything in perspective. Like, yeah. people realize don't realize that we put our lives on the line every play. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and up until that situation, that's never happened in the NFL right. ever. Right, and just knowing that 
any play could be your last play. Like I broke my neck in college. And I never, right, yeah. I never stepped on that field thinking like, all right, I'm, I'm probably about to break my neck. Like, no, right. you, you just go out there and you play football. You take your hits and you catch the ball, get out of bounds when you can. You, you try to run through somebody's face when you can. And, and that's just the sacrifices that we got to make. But mm-hmm. the fans don't understand that during that situation, during uh, contract negotiation, it's I got to put me and my family first just got to, to, in order for us to be financially stable for the rest of our lives. Yep. And – it's not any point of being greedy. Like, I don't think anybody's being greedy right. during a, a contract negotiation, but you always got to put yourself first because for the first two, three, four years, you've always put the team first. Absolutely. You've right. always made it to meetings on yeah. time, and you've always, you know, busted your ass every, every place. Fulfilled your obligation as yeah. a professional athlete. And for one off season, three, six months, I, I just need mine. Yeah. Right. And let's go back to, like you said, the neck injury that you sustained in college. That neck injury, they literally kind of held that over – over your head to where you didn't get drafted as high as you would have based on that injury. Going into it, like I saw the emotion, how elated were you and just just to be drafted? Because, I mean, I saw the emotions. What was going through your mind when you got that call? Um, Well, the day before I was at the draft, Mm-hmm. And I didn't get my name called, so I, I sit, had to sit, sit there and watch thirty two people. Was it twelve hours called. you was there or something crazy? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I was there. <laughs> I was there for damn near twelve hours. Walked out uh, with my family. Yeah, were you so mad? This is the first yeah. round, right? Yeah, first, first round. round. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm in the uh, in the back room. Uh, I still remember it's me, Greedy Williams, Cody Ford, Drew Locke, mm-hmm. all were there and didn't get our name called. Right, right. This, and this so. is and like I said, these are vivid memories for an athlete. Like I said, for uh, of your caliber. Like I said, you know what you did in college producing-wise. Obviously, doctors basically cleared you, but then there's always going to be some type of, you know, area of concern or or reason for Them not teams to not to not, pay you. Yeah. Right. You know what not I mean? This is what we want draft. the fans yeah. to understand, that what goes into a mindset now, you're going into a contract year, now you want to get paid because they tried to hold this over your head not to pay you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let, let's go. I'm gonna go back to that mm-hmm. that draft process because we all know, well. I don't I know. didn't go through that <laughs> <laughs> right, but I, I was seventh round, a third round. Right, but we so, want the, right. the fans to understand, like, because you deserved to go to be in the first round. First but you round, sat right? there first round and saw all these players that obviously, like I said, better they're not, not on your better. level. We, yeah, we. You know yeah, what yeah, mean? That's that's that a whole you should have been there, but you didn't. Right. So that that day the. Anger, mad, sad, family there, embarrassed. Like, what were the feelings going through your I body? Would say right there? More, more so embarrassed because I brought all my family. Like, my mm. whole family was out there. Yeah, yeah. Then it was sadness. Then it was mm. anger. Then it was, <laughs> damn, am I good enough to play in the NFL? Yep. Mm. Like all, all of those emotions all through a twenty-four hour period. Mm. Right. Then I, I, I'm at home watching the draft, and it's the second round. Yep. First name off the board: Byron Murphy. Then Debo Samuel. Yep. Okay. All right. Hmm. Now I got to sit there and wait 29 more picks, picks until yeah. I get my name called. So right. I had to sit there and listen to Debo Samuel, Paris Campbell, A.J. Brown, J.J. Mm. Um, Sega Whiteside, Andy <laughs> Isabella. Yeah, hey, yeah. I love Harry how you remember. Keep going, yeah. keep going, keep yeah. going. But Hollywood that's the thing. Brown, is, like, but that's what motivates and that's what inspires, that's what drives yeah. athletes to do what they do to overcome yeah. the adversity, to overcome circumstances, to overcome injuries. Yeah. You know, for now him to be a household name, to be – that number one guy to produce for right. the Seattle Seahawks. That's what goes into yeah. him wanting to be the best that he can be. And we, a lot of fans, they just they don't understand that. And and that's where I I I would love, like I said, using our platform to educate these fans. Like you guys have no idea what it takes. Take your emotions, take your fantasy picks out of it, because that has nothing to do with a guy reality. his livelihood wanting to be the best number one that he can be in order to provide not only for himself but his family and people that they just don't get it. Yeah. I mean, those when you say the names, right, it's like that's where people watch and they'll understand. Like, he knows all those. Like, I know all those names. Yeah, I remember. You know what, what I'm saying? And <laughs> what I was doing and, like, it's, it's no knock on any of those yeah, guys. Yeah, exactly. Right. But it's like right. it's just motivation for me because yeah. I feel like I'm I'm the best. Right, so right. Mm-hmm. Treat me like treat me that way. Right, right. And once I once I didn't get picked until the last pick of the second round, 
it was just like up until that point, I had to walk out of the room because they were filming uh, Hey Rookie um, at, at my house. Right. I had to leave oh. the room and go in my mom and them room. And, right. And just, I did was. You, did you cry? You was mad? Yeah, I, you was cry- I was crying. I cried and I was mad. And then my pops came in and I was like, you got to come back out there. You good. Like, you built for it. Right. And then mm. I get the phone call from the Seahawks. Right. Somebody told me that they played pranks on people. Oh, yeah. You didn't even believe it when they called. So I, that's why I, when I answered the phone, I'm like, Hello, yeah. And they're like, "This is uh, John Snyder with CIC. Okay, I'm, I'm still <laughs> right, right now. Right now, like, you yeah, stop yeah, playing with me. Tell me you picking me. Or, right, right. <laughs> <I'm about laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Downtown. And, and, um, he said, uh, "This is Pete Carroll. I'm gonna hand you over." There. They held the phone up to the room. Yeah, and all everything in me was just relieved because awesome. What everybody was saying before, like, oh, it don't matter. After you get picked, right? All that matters what you, you in there, the right? As right, long as you yeah. get in there, yep. And that's all I was thinking about was I'm here now. All right, let's get to work. Yeah. And my pops hugged me. My family was excited, and I was just ready to get to Seattle the next day. Yeah, as soon as I, possible. Yeah, Russ called me that same night. Mm-hmm. And I text um, Mo Kelly, who's our player personnel guy. I was like, When can I come up there? I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to <laughs> yeah. leave now. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So <laughs> I was just ready to get to work, man. Cause yeah. Not to prove anybody else wrong or or prove myself right. It was just I was just ready to play football and, right. and just go to work. Now you put in all this, like I said, you've done all the work. Now you just want to get all this behind you. Right. You know what exactly. I mean? You want to get that first year under your belt. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, like I said, Russell Wilson uh, was your quarterback. You know what was it like playing with Russell for your development? Because like I said, obviously, like I said, your skill set. Like I said, I, I'm I'm sitting here today that to say that. I didn't have your skill set when I was in high school or college. but I'm You don't have saying, it now. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, you're, you're trying to get where we are. Hey, there's only two full threes in the room. That's me and DK. Oh, God. So there's only oh, two of us God. in here while okay, you playing. We'll you dig. All right, let's go out here on this track, man. Let's I'm good. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So just, just, just share with us about your development, you know, obviously coming in. Um, for me, like I said, I remember my rookie year, like I said, like I said, I didn't have the skill set that you guys had. Like you're more talented. Um, for me, I had that was a lot of build up to where I where I got to. Um, what was it like working with with Russ and obviously um, working with uh, Pete Carroll and you coming in and and knowing okay, I at some point I'm going to be the number one guy. I didn't think about none of that. I was just happy to be there. And I was just <laughs> run around, catch the ball. Yeah, That's it. Around, yeah <laughs> they dog. just told me. <laughs> He told yeah. me, get out there, run, use yeah. your speed, and be big and physical. So I was like, all right, bet. Do right. that, yeah. But just seeing how Russ, Bobby, Dwayne Brown, how they were at the facility early every day, mm-hmm. how they were the last ones to leave, and how they watched film and took care of their body. Mm-hmm. That was one thing that I took from all three of those guys. Because yes. if I didn't do any of that, I probably would have had way more injuries yeah. now than I ever did. So if we played on Sunday – me and Bobby would get there early on Monday, mm-hmm. uh, work out, watch film, leave. Tuesday morning at 6.30, we back in the gym working out. And, and Tuesday is the player's day off. <laughs> By the way, know. yes. <laughs> yeah, literally some guys, they don't like they don't show up to Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Right. Because Monday's Most guys uh, don't show yeah, up to Wednesday. Right, yeah, because Monday you obviously you come in and review, right. the, review the game you know, prior uh, from the weekend. And then Tuesday, like you said, you use that, you know, depending on if you had an injury or whatever, like guys come in and they get a little extra workout in. And then, like I said, obviously Wednesday is the start of the week uh, that you're preparing for your next opponent. Yeah. So, yeah, let me, yeah. So you're Monday, on Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, we're working out at 6 30. Uh, then we go meet at the uh, facility. We swim in the facility. Um, and then Russ would have his meeting, um, his player, player uh, run meeting. meeting. Okay. And then Wednesday, Thursday, normal practice. Friday, normal. And then we would f- swim every Friday. Saturday, travel. Sunday, wow. play the game. And we did that for 17 weeks. And I remember we went like 11 and 5. And the 49ers were undefeated. Bobby was like, watch, like week 12, the team starts showing their true colors. Right. Getting and tired, yeah. injuries start coming. So we we went down to um, San Fran my rookie year, and we beat them in overtime. Mm-hmm. And Bobby was like, I told you. Like, we about to start getting on the road. four quarters yeah. plus. Yeah, they got wow. tired. And Warm then, out. like, just seeing him and his work ethic throughout the whole season, like, he, he didn't taper off. Like, yep. normally people would – do that for like the first five, six weeks and then start to taper off. Right. 
he would hit me up like you still ready to work yeah. out like, what were you when you hit when he hit yeah. you up as a rookie when you, you like, like, oh, you'd be like oh, oh no it was, was, you, it's a, it was I, to I, a point I hope to you skipped this week right. Right. Like, oh, <laughs> it was to a point to where I couldn't let him down because like, I wanted to show him how awesome. great I wanted to be yeah and then with Russ working out during the off season it was me and him some days and I'm the only receiver out there route and, after route after route and it is non-stop with him because yeah. he he want to work out in the morning night Woke yeah. up at seven o'clock, ran on the beach yeah. just just to go work out. Yeah. Um, let, just, let me talk to some of y'all young receivers out there because a lot of these kids don't understand. They don't run routes probably for even twenty minutes with other guys before they get tired. Oh no. Because they think they're dudes. They'll come out here from college, say, I'm getting ready for, you know, draft prep, all that. And they'll have four or five other receivers in the line and they'll be tired after twenty or thirty minutes. No. So you would literally run an hour with Russ, and it's you're and running Russ every single hour. route. Yeah, it's me and Russ for an hour on a baseball field. They, yeah. He got lines painted over. Yeah. And we running routes. And running I'm the only receiver. And you're not running half speed, I know. No. And <laughs> if I drop a ball, I got to come back and run it again. Yeah. And there's no, damn, Russ, you, you done? I can't no. say that. I'm not no. about to say. <laughs> no. I'm not about to ask Russ, like, when the last right. route is. Yeah. Like, no, I can't. I can't show him yeah. that right. there's no there's weakness fatigue. in me. Yeah, yeah or yeah. fatigue. Like, That's you can depend on me in the fourth quarter. So let's go. I'm gonna show you how hard I can work. Yeah. And I would spend like a month with him down at his awesome. crib in, in San Diego, but just seeing everything up close and personal. Mm -hmm. Like I even got to play with Marshawn Lynch my, my rookie right. year because yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he came and back. And just seeing him and how he operates and how everybody got so much respect for him mm -hmm. is just crazy because that's that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying yep. to have the respect of everybody in the league and everybody around the yep. around the facility to where, like you said, I'm a household name, but I'm trying to be a worldwide name. Right. How how okay. important is veteran leadership in a locker room? Because again, we talk about every year they want to pick teams and pick this player, and but to be Super Bowl champions and to go to, uh, you know what, what I guess seventeen games now, so to be like fourteen and threes and go deep in the playoff. How important is that veteran leadership? Um, I wouldn't even say veteran leadership is is that important. Now that I think about it, okay, you just got to have a team that's close. Like, okay. you just got to have the brothers. The camaraderie. Yes. If, okay. Because I think about the Bengals two years ago. Facts. Nobody expected them to make Facts. it to the Super Bowl. They right. were all a bunch of young dudes. Right. But I could see how they played on Sundays and when they were on the football field. It's like, oh, yeah, he fight for him. Mm -hmm. T. Higgins definitely fighting for Jamar Chase. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Boyd is definitely going to have Joe Burrow's back. Mike, Hil Mike Hilton definitely got Eli Apple back. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a lot of brothers out there playing – football with each other yep. and that's what I, I think a lot of teams are, are missing because even in college it was like that like we spend so much time around each yep. other yep. with uh, off-season workouts and practices and, and going over to the coach house to have dinner and, and yeah. just talk to each other like we're all in the facility from nine to five so yeah yeah all we got is each other so yeah. I think if you got that camaraderie and that brotherhood then you can be unstoppable Absolutely. On Sundays, so yeah. to where you don't need that veteran leadership. So I had, uh, I had coached uh, Matt Corral in high mm -hmm. school. So when Matt came down there, when I would call him, like, yeah, y'all was always together. Yes. You know? Like y'all, like y'all, real a family. Mm -hmm. but that's right. what it takes to win. Yeah. Right. So just touch on something you said. You you mentioned the word missing. Um, obviously, you guys, the city, the team, organization, you guys miss Russell Wilson, Wilson this year. He departs. He goes to the Broncos. What is your what is your thought process like? Because obviously you didn't win a Super Bowl with Russ, but you knew the city did, right? But you knew what Russ brought to that city to the team. Uh, you played with your first four years with him. Now you have Geno Smith. When you talked about the leadership, veteran leadership, that's from my understanding. That's a lot of leadership. That's a lot of veteran leadership. Um, that leaves that locker room, inserts Geno Smith. What is the expectations of that locker room? Because, like I said, Russ, that's a big voice. Right. That's a big void that, that yeah. needed to be filled. Um, we, are, we now know that Geno filled that void. Um, take us through kind of like that process of, you know, Russell leaving, here comes Geno Smith, the expectations, and then what you guys did with, with Geno this year? Um, well, after Russ left, of course, that's a big missing void with, one, his play. <laughs> right, two, that's what I'm his saying. leadership, yes. and three, just his presence overall. Presence, yeah. So how I looked at it was Geno played three years behind Russ, so mm -hmm. he sat in the room with Russ. Yep. He knows 
how Russ thinks. He knows how Russ talks. I'm thinking he's about to try to emulate make, emulate Russ. <laughs> right. Mm. He didn't do that not one time. Interesting. Geno Smith did stuff his own way. And I think it, there was a little childish aspect um, his first three years to where he knew he was the backup so he could, like, chill a little bit. Mm-hmm. But every – when we traded Russ, Geno flew down here, and we were throwing – and I can tell just by looking in his eyes, he was like, "It was different." He locked was in. Different. He was yeah, locked in. He was ready. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, "Okay, this is a different Gino than I'm I'm used to." Because my first three years, Gino, me and Gino would talk about the scouting report because he'd been in the league for right. seven seven years already, and we played the Redskins, and I would be like, "Hey, bro, what you think about so and so, so and so?" He'll right. all right, yeah, he'll give me like tidbits of information on what he saw on film. But now, just going into training camp, and he's the first one out there, and First one at the facility. He's watching film. Mm-hmm. Nobody's. He's not talking. So he's just really? had his head down working. Roles and Love responsibilities it. have changed. Love it. Week eight, he gave us a pregame speech, mm-hmm. and you could just see everybody just locked in on him because they seen how how much he's matured and changed, yeah. and he wasn't the same Gino. He was like, "This is my team now. Mm-hmm. Like y'all gonna listen. I've mm-hmm. I've put in the work and I put in the time to." Where I've I've stapled my my name yeah. uh, in Seattle and j- he just yeah. everybody just started to respect him. You know yeah, what's great crazy. about that though? You said about week week eight. Mm-hmm. He could have did that week one mm-hmm. if you guys hadn't gained the respect yet. You had or hadn't given him that respect yet because yeah. week one everybody want to see. Okay, you can do that in preseason. Right? Cool. Yeah. But I got to see you come out here and ball at Cons- least four or five right. games. Consistency. And you, you get to mid season and he for him to sit do in that, the pocket. that's awesome. Like we would watch highlights. And the balls that he would throw just sitting in the pocket taking the hits while he know he about to get smashed. Yeah, and yeah. the ball would be a dime. And yeah. be like, that's that's crazy. And he's still coming in the next morning. He's yep. early getting work, but he's still out there um, during walkthrough. And Dylan, they was like, Gino, calm down. You got a certain amount of reps. He was like, no, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm out here at walkthrough. I'm throwing the ball today. I want all the reps. Yeah, exactly. So I'm <laughs> like, okay, that's, that's like different because I ain't never seen him act like that or, or yeah. do that or take that type of leadership. Yeah. Until last year, and my hat goes off to him because right, he, I mean, that, he did out his Gino way. Smith, yeah. keep yep, doing yep. your thing, boy. Yep, I think it shows number one the maturity and Facts. understanding, really understanding the assignment. Exactly, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> because uh, yeah. here as a, as a quarterback, unlike any other sport, he touches the ball every play. Er, play. He impacts how the offense goes. Right. I mean, he's a vital part of impacting, impacting uh, the success of the team. He impacts what you do as mm-hmm. a receiver. Sure. So obviously that chemistry, like you said, he flew down. You guys start throwing, trying to develop some chemistry, some right. rapport. Um, you know, what was it about, you know, him throwing balls versus – uh, Russell Wilson throwing you throwing you the ball because sometimes there, there's there's difference uh, right. when, with, with well, quarterbacks. Gino Gino probably he didn't know how to have no touch at, big, at the beginning. Right. He, he jammed <laughs> so many on my feet. Yeah. I'm like fast you know, ball I'm right every here, time. Bro. I'm like <laughs> shallow. It's a shallow cross. <laughs> right. I'm eight yards no, away it's a from slant, you. and I'm <laughs> right there. And I'm backside. I'm one on one backside. Yeah. So you yeah. already know I'm in the boundary. I'm like. <laughs> I said, Gino, throw that ball hard again. We fighting, bro. Like, stop throwing the ball so damn hard. Right, like, I had right, to get right. on him like time and right. time again to where when the season started, now touch, touch, the, touch, the, touch, the level touch. Right, but touch. somebody would not knowing no. the game of football, they would take that as you being arrogant. I'm like, man, he's a quarterback. He's supposed to throw the ball like, that no, hard. No, but no, that's to it. right. Yeah, that yeah. There's levels to it. I mean, I think one of the best things about quarterback and obviously being successful. In the league is ball accuracy, yeah. placement, yeah. touch when it needs to be touched, a little zip when it needs to be a little zip. Yeah. And then, as you said, standing in the pocket, knowing you got T.J. Watt, about you know, to knock Bosa, your head off. you know, <laughs> coming down your ground. throat. Right. And like you said, delivering a dime, you know what I mean? Because, like I said, he understands. Like I said, that's the responsibility, you know what I mean? Of a quarterback, you right. gonna have to you gonna have to sit in there and take the hits, just like you coming over the middle. You know, sometimes hey, hit. you gonna have to take the hit. You know what I mean? If that quarterback can stand back there and deliver it and take a hit, you can catch it and take a lick. And I right. think that's what a respect and obviously the gelling, uh, the chemistry, the rapport all comes into play. And like I said, some things just don't happen overnight. Like yeah. you said. Him throwing that ball like on the back side, just zipping mm-hmm. it. To, he had to it, figure it out. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have Through to repetitions. figure. Yeah, it's all about that chemistry. Yeah. Just so everything, like I said, we have a 
football obviously is hard in itself. We have a hard job, but we make it look easy. And that's where the professionalism comes in, comes into play. Like I said, you talking to Gino and Gino, Gino not taking it personal. Right. Like, what? Bro, yeah. I've been in the league longer than you. What you mean? This is how it's thrown. Like, no, but, there's, a, there's yeah. levels to it. Right. For so sure. what's next? What what like I said, you're constantly, you know, striving to be better, to get better. What's next? Obviously the Super Bowl is at the top of your chart. But sometimes, like I said, you know, Super Bowl may not come. You know what I mean? Hope it, hope, hopefully it does. What's next for you? For, for you to, at the end of your career, be like, okay, I did that. Like every rookie that comes in, I want to impact them. Mm. So That's big. I start talking to Charles Cross and Abe Lucas and Ken Walker is like my brother. Like his, Our lockers Yo. are right beside each other. Yeah. But it's like I want to take the next step and how can I help the team more? Mm-hmm. How can I bring a younger guy with me? So that's all I'm focusing on right now is just trying to help the next generation of athletes or the next rookie class that comes in help get their footing right because that's what Bobby and, and Russ did for me. Yeah. So I can only gotcha. continue Pass to it just down. pay it forward. Iron sharpens iron. Right. Mm-hmm. Does, does it it's feel like a little weird that you're the veteran in the uh, locker room? Last year was the first year. <laughs> really? They ain't and, number 22, and, 21. I'm 25. And I'm thinking a, like. Crazy. Yeah, they, yeah, I can still relate to them. No. Uh, <laughs> they do. <doing> I, <laughs> I cannot relate to them. <laughs> Like that's they, a, that's, they, them youngsters. All of them want them to young record everything, and and they they just want to always be on their phones and and not not really put the time and work and effort yeah. in because they think oh I've made it. It's supposed to come easy now. Like no, no. this is when, when it starts. Start. The yeah, work this starts is when you yeah. first start. Like it was, it was just crazy just having a conversation with with Ken Walker and Charles Cross and Kobe Bryant and Tariq Woolen like. Yeah. They 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 look at life differently. Like yeah. they didn't grow up in Mississippi or or they ain't, they didn't <laughs> right, have right. they didn't have uh, any struggles uh you know with their life. Uh I know Ken grew up in in Memphis that's down the street but he went to Wake Forest in Michigan State. I stayed at the crib my, right, whole, yeah. my whole career. Right, my, my right. whole life in the so, sip. <laughs> right. So it was just different just yeah. seeing how their mindset worked when they got away from home yeah. or seeing their mindset change when they're by themselves. Like most of them don't don't know what to do. Like Ken Walker stayed in Seattle this whole offseason. I said, bro, you got to get out of Seattle. That's like right. you're already there for six months. Get out. Get out. Go yeah. travel. See go, the go world. See the world. Yeah. Take a break from football. Like like detox from this stuff. Because once you back in it, you got to be back in it, and you got to be a hundred percent in it. Like you can't halfway be in it. Facts. Speaking of detox, Facts. what what are you doing to detox away from from football? ball? So What's I know last interests? year. I know last year. Um, you know everybody saw. The play you walk, you go walk the dude down. Who was that? Uh, Arizona uh, yes, yeah. Buddha. I mean, Buddha. I mean, Buddha Baker. you came out of nowhere from the backside, walked him down. Everybody saw the speed that everybody knew that you had. Thought you were the fastest human in the world. Right. <laughs> That's what so, it looked like. So obviously, like I said, then you go sign up for track and field. Mm-hmm. Is that a way to just a detoxing? You know what I mean? Because like we do a lot of. Things. I come in here to detox with this knucklehead. This is how I detox. <laughs> you know what I mean? But is that is that one of your like I said? This is my worst experiment <laughs> of the day with this guy. It was 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 <laughs> signing up for this race, and so like I said, everybody. I mean, everybody was looking forward to what to the race. Hundred meters. I mean, you ran a ten, what ten, three, three. two, seven, three. whatever it was. That's that's blazing fast, smoking, smoking fast for us. Track world, yeah, man. it's okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you? How did that make you feel? And then, uh, but like I said, let's talk about the detox. Is that something that you right. did to just detox, and you nah. just wanted to just do? I mean, if I thought about it in high school, I played every sport: right. basketball, football, ran track. I just try to. It's what you do? Continue right. to just do that, right. just yeah. to get away from football. I mean, right now, you know, we be hooping on, on yeah. Tuesday, yeah, like, Tuesday, right. Thursday, I hooping. Right. Um, you know I mean? yeah, I just try to schedule around right. this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> trying to get me in here on my hoop days. Like, T, hey, can you uh, can you tape on Thursday? What? No, can you uh, work on Thursday? <laughs> nah, nah, can you tape on Thursday? I'm like, oh, uh, I got a hoop. I got something to right, talk right. right. <laughs> oh, hoop. But no, I just try to just keep myself busy, just not focus. On football so much, so I, I take acting lessons on on Tuesdays and during the season, but Mondays in the off season, nice. just to 
continue to just expand who I am. I mean, I I, I sit at a production company, um, 50 Cent's production company, Hidden Empire, and just sit up there and listen to them yep. talk about movies or talk about producing movies and directing movies. Like, I just want to have my hand in every pot to where I'm not just known as a football player. Like, right. I want to be known in the acting world or mm -hmm. uh, I, I went to um, NBA All-Star this this uh, past year, and that was my first time ever going. Mm -hmm. I, just, yeah. I just like... Different, yeah, just different experience. Yeah, yeah, different yeah. experiences. We yeah. share, we share an MVP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. MVP. Other, uh, yeah. You trash. <laughs> no, no, MVP. No, so, no. NBA well, All Star well, MVP. Since, 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 again, he always talking about he he want to race everybody in Bro, the world. No, you can't talk right now. You why can't are we talk going right. to racing? We're we, talking see, basketball. basketball. See, he about to get scared. He he talked about racing everybody on the show. But since you came on the show, he ain't said nothing I about you, it's racing. Mutual, it's mutual respect. So can I can I get that? Can I bet that five k? What you want? What you, what you trying to what, beat him in that, what? Beat in him in what? Can you beat him in the forty five k? If I get the right start, he will be in if, trouble. Will you put? He, five, hey, let me tell you something. He, hey, he DK, mess around and slip. Him? He mess around and slip. He's in 5K. trouble. Five k. Five k. I do that. I bet. If he slip, he in trouble though. Well, I'm he ain't gonna you, slip. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Unless up, you trip him. I got the Dorsey flex and the toe and everything, dog. I saw him coming. Oh, hey, it's what's to find out. We hey, find you, out. I, I ain't scared to run him now. You know what I mean? Well, let's, Trust find, me. let's find out. He ain't going to beat me by far. If he beats me, it ain't going to beat me by far. Trust it, me. Five, no matter how far. One, it's just, you got to win. It's a winner or a loser. 40? 40. Ooh, I, I, I believe I can get him in the 40. Because if it's anything like 60, I know that's, 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 when, that's when it's turnover. What do you run coming out? In the, in the 40. Combine? Four three, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot we're the only four threes in the room. Man, this nigga talking four about six. Uh, four six. What he yeah. used to run. What are you talking about? What you used to run? <laughs> I, ain't, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't used to run nothing. You I wasn't used to fast. Run. You was a four five. I was. You was a four five. Right. Three years but ago. when I went to the combine, I ran my time, and I'm not embarrassed to say it, it was a four six three. I was playing two sports at the time. I wasn't. We're really... We're not gonna make excuses. No, no, no. We but I wasn't really concentrating that. on the forty of any of that. I, I was playing good. basketball. Good. But like I said, I improved my time from. The, the combine uh, when I ran my own grass like I said I didn't even, I wasn't even that concerned on like they were really taking into account like what type of grass you ran on yeah All that, that was a thing of, back I didn't in the even day. know yeah so Nowadays, we had like a terrible matter. field so when I ran I ran in between four five two and four five five for okay. me that was decent that was like I'm like I'm good but at at the next level like mm -hmm. I said you don't really necessarily Need to be a four three or four four. No, no. But there's a lot no. of guys like say you just got to polish your game. Get, you got to work yeah, on your craft. Get open. Do you what you mean? do well. But I progressively got faster as I got older. Right. You know right. what I mean? And like I'm fast. I'm fast now. You're, fa you're you are the fastest fifty year old I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Right First of all, hey, I'm not so. fifty. Quit talking about I'm fifty, <laughs> dog. I'm knocking on the door. There you go. Knock <laughs> knock. Hey, Who's there? Fifty. You know what I mean? But I hey, I, I, I stay active. I hoop. No, I, I do know, it. Like I, I said, know. we hoop. You know what I mean? Oh, he be talking like, man, why you don't dunk it? Because I can't. I just be laying up. Lay. Lay. He already, he up there and he I lay. I be laying up. You know what I mean? I let we him do the dunking. I know you in there dunking. I know you in there. Oh, and he be, he be in there, James. So like, I, we the best two basketball course, players in the building right now. Of course, right because y'all the only two athletes in the building. You know, playing I'm glad, I'm, bums, glad you, I'm glad you know that right now. So I know the first two, three years you heard. Again, I heard, and we always talked about it. DK's the next T.O., blah, blah, blah. Right. Like... I hate when people put that pressure on some of the players and or put like the expectation like they're supposed to play this way because to me you're you're in his game is totally different. Yeah. So I told him I was like I don't like that comparison, right? So what were you thinking like when people like the media especially or like some maybe some of team teammates said you're the next TO. I got excited. Really? Like I heard TO, Julio, Calvin Johnson. Right. I mean, that was, that's where I want to be. Right, right. So right, I ain't, right. I'm not mad at any comparison, but I, at the end of right. the day, I know who I am as a person. First right, of all, right, it right. was a compliment to me because I'm like, shit, the TV. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, this dude, you know what I mean? This dude, <laughs> bad. He can do everything that I couldn't do, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm like, I took it as a compliment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's again, funny. To, to, to watch him and, and like, I said, like I said, when we met, you know, in Nashville, we exchanged information, then we worked out a little bit. Over the you know last couple of summers, and uh, even last year you know yeah it worked uh, out was it our, last year last summer worked yeah out? we did we worked out twice you know and um we see Eric Kenyon that one day yeah right. and then I, then we worked out at uh, UCLA and I came mm -hmm. out there <laughs> he asked me he's like man what make you still, what make you want to still do this you know what I mean <laughs> yeah because yes. he was out there tights ready ready like, yeah I already but, know <laughs> but because I know for me 
I'm gonna be out there with you. You know, I'm like it, like I said, it's iron sharpening iron. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's not a matter of you being the next TO or whatever. It's me passing on to whatever knowledge, yeah. you know what I mean, to you and trying to refine like what I see, what you're doing, this mm-hmm. and that, the other. Like you're a, you're a more powerful, stronger runner than I am. But there's some a lot of like I said similarities like right. myself, you uh, Julio Jones, if if you will. So for me, it's just out there, like I said, me whatever I can do to help you be better, mm-hmm. better receiver. Like I'm always I'm always gonna be there. And it was it was my rookie year. I remember I, we had a Thursday night game against either the Cardinals or the, or San Fran. I think it was the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. And this is when I got the most respect for To when he texted me after the game mm-hmm. and said it was a two point conversion and we needed it. And T.O. was like, you know windows get tighter when you're in the red zone. So you got to make sure you look the ball in, catch it, and get down. Right. He didn't put nothing on social media. He didn't tweet nothing out right. or put nothing on Instagram. And right. every time he had something to say, it was always directly to me. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, when I noticed that, I was like, everybody else putting stuff on social media yeah. and, and called me out on social media. And I was like, bro, you got my number. Hit Just me. Text Thank me. Just you. text me directly. Thank you. But when he did that, I was like, that's, that's that's real. Different. Like yeah, that's real. Like I respect him yep. to the moon and back because he right. did that just for me when he didn't even have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. My thing, man. I don't I don't do stuff for for clicks, likes, or whatever. I know the perception that people have me of me anyway. A lot of people in the media they don't like me. They perceive me to be a certain way, this and that and the other because of hearsay. I've always been this way. We. Hatch, no. I'm, when I'm on that field, I'm an extrovert. Right. Off the field, I'm an introvert. Exactly. And like you said, when we're, we're training and we're working out, I want to do whatever I can to help you become a better receiver because those things that I see you're doing, I did. And I did it early and sometimes late in my career. So if I can expedite the process, you, yeah. yeah, early on to where you don't need to make those corrections later on in your career, that's only going to make you a better receiver right. yep. now going forward. So, again, yeah. like, those are things that I had to learn. In that red zone, like I said, everything is quicker and faster. Yeah. If you think about just go back to the Super Bowl when they should have handed the ball off to Marshawn. Why do you think Butler intercepted that ball? He knew what was coming. Every, every Looking at down and distance, formation, mm-hmm. or what have you, he'd been on that slant damn near before Russ even threw it. That's well they should. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and like I said, and it was like I said, it was no gray area. There was no room for error. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's game of inches. Absolute yeah, game of everything, inches. Like I said, and that's the thing, like too, like that two point conversion, like everything, like I said, yeah. is a game of inches. Yeah. Everything counts. That's why yeah. you go for two. Right. Right. <laughs> because right. you right. you need those it. little so things. Those are like some of the things too, like, you know, catching the ball tucking it before you run you know what I mean mm-hmm. I was guilty of that early on in my career because I like once I started to see and realize I had the talent to play at that level and then I caught up with the speed of the game and I'm like man I can really do this you know what I mean I'm playing behind Jerry I'm seeing what he he's done I'm watching film of other receivers that played before me I'm of watching me. <laughs> yeah DK, what you laughing at? I'm laughing at that dog. Oh, he was, was, watching, he was watching film of me, gosh dang it. Yeah, I, boy, I had to look hard for that. But, but, I mean, those are some of the things, like I said, that helped me get better. You know what I mean? And I just had that hunger. I had that desire. You know what I mean? And I dedicated myself. And then yeah. when you talk about good to great athletes, discipline, like I said, that's my other D. Discipline is what separates the good from the great. You hear, you've heard of all great athletes talk about it and people that have talked about the greats. They mention it like, what is it? Yeah. What is it that separates the good and what makes players so great? And so for me, I've been discipline. fortunate enough to be in that conversation of some of the greats to have played the game. Never thought it would would have ever happened, but now I realize, okay, yeah, let me share some of this knowledge with somebody yeah. that I see. I saw that hunger. Like I said, I, I understand kind of like what you're going through. Like you said, it's not really necessary going through like the the sitting stage of. Knowing you should have been in the first round, then are you sitting in the second round? Yeah, that's over now. Though. Knowing, yeah. like I said, it's almost like you know, there's that chip you wanted to get to get yep. to work. You wanted to become better. You wanted to get better that night. Mm. But it's a process. Nothing is yep. an overnight <laughs> success. And right. I saw that, and I see that in you. So, yeah. like I said, and obviously the comparisons uh, of 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 what we do in the football field. I know that, like I said, there's a lot more to yeah. DK than what than what we are seeing and have seen. Yeah. So I want to share and give you all those little little pieces of nuggets yeah. to, to, to make you a better player and greater player, not only for you, but for Gino, the organization. Because, bro, like I said, people don't mm. know what it's like 
to be a number one receiver until you yeah. have to be a number one receiver. Right. Yeah. You what are, I mean? Yeah, you what, stepped right in yeah. and fulfilled that role. And it was and hard to do. And you're, and you're sustaining. Some yeah. guys, they get put in that role and they fizzle out. Yeah. You know what I mean? What are some of the things you need? You think you need to work on to be a true number one for the longevity of your mm-hmm. career? Uh, run after catch. Run after catch. So not just catching the ball and damn, I right, seen it right. all on these highlight tapes right. getting tackled. Give it yeah. what? What's something you think that you, that's that's a hard one to work on? Right. So give me something you no, that you it's can not. no hold, no, no, nah, no, no no. But I'm no. going to tell him. Let me let me before you go to your point. Go ahead. What I feel like you should do because you. I saw like a couple of highlights. Like right. you did, like you're getting caught, but you you so fast. You're like why is he getting caught? A lot of that is conditioning too. Okay, that's a lot of that conditioning. Conditioning too is like I don't know. I don't know how you how you practice. Like for me, and I adopted. Well, you can it get in Jerry, better condition. You know what I mean? When we caught that ball wherever Four we went. Yeah. We to the end zone. Yeah, to the end zone. Even like the last play of every period. Then the running backs they got involved because they saw me do it. I did it on. Regular routes, regular plays. Wherever I caught the ball, I'm sprinting at least 40, 50 yards. And yeah. then, like I said, like we got to come back if it's a series of plays. But literally on the last play of every period, Garrison Hurst did it. The, we got the quarterbacks. They end up doing it, the tight ends. Okay, every time so they knew I finished one. anyway. Yeah. Last play, I'm taking it to the house. Yeah, I do that. That's, okay. that's something that I do. That's, that's one. Do okay. That's, that's conditioning. Okay. What, that what, what's said. something else that you can do that you can work on that specific skill? My deeper routes and not just taking too many steps, getting out of my break. I okay. Know it's, yeah. Yeah. We talked about it. Yeah. yeah the three you step, did three step at the yeah. top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. Yeah. Working on getting out of my breaks at the top of the routes and meeting the ball and then transitioning because all everything right now for me is transitioning up the field and not just catching and getting tired. Out of field. Yeah. yeah. So into the routes and right. out of the routes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think that's gonna be probably the biggest thing for me uh, moving forward. Yep. Speaking to receivers, especially specific receivers that do different things great, right? Because when you say, let's say if you were to say um, to catch the ball, you can work on different catching drills, right? right? And then you can say, mm-hmm. okay, route run, I can work on this. But that run after catch is so specific to usually just a natural ball carrier. But one thing I did hear a, a guy say back in the day is he knew where all 11 players were. Yes, that's what, okay, that, yeah, that's you what You see what I'm say, saying? Yeah. That, and that's... It's not a physical skill, and it's not something you can really practice on because you ain't going to go out and put uh, 11 garbage cans <laughs> right. up and do that, you know. But it's maybe watching more film to know, okay, when they're in this coverage, we know the safety's going to buzz and stuff like that. That's something that. Tyler does. It's, really? It's, okay. it's, yeah, Tyler's great at that. Okay. And to your point, it's just like a point guard is having yeah, court yeah, awareness. Absolutely. You know what I mean? A point guard is like, you know, at, once you get the ball in your hand, you become the guy. You right. become, yeah. the, become the yeah. point guy because – Everybody is converging on you because you you're the ball carrier. Right. Yeah. And as you say, like I said, it's it's a matter of like, and we talked about just just the other day when we were, we were I was explaining the dig route about mm-hmm. not drifting up drifting up, up the field up the when field, you catch it. Yeah. Field. It's about the court awareness. You can I mean field awareness. You can see the lines on the field. You don't have to like run look your at them. And look right. at the yeah. lines. You, feel you know, based yeah. on you know what route you're running to know where you are. Right. Like if you're running a dig route or whatever basic cross or whatever, and you got to come flat. If you go drifting up the field, you're going to drift into a headache or exactly. drop ball, and you're going to be going to the hospital. <laughs> so you have to go flat and be Better quarterback friendly. <laughs> and usually the quarterback should help you. But sometimes, like, hey, nobody's perfect. Somebody no route is going to be – yeah. So sometimes you can take care of the quarterback, and the quarterback can take care of you. So <laughs> those are some of the things, like you said, yeah. to your point is just, like you said, understanding where everybody else – where yeah. everybody is right. uh, on the field. Absolutely. I know you're not a big social media guy, but let everybody know where they can find you on social media, when they can find you in the off season. Uh, DKM14 <laughs> on social media, Instagram, Twitter. That's pretty much all I got. All yeah. Right. And all what right. are you, I mean, I heard you say you're doing all these things you're in acting classes, you're sitting in on biz, business meetings. What what can we expect? Like, what's new? What, what is something Outside that you're Outside the football right, world. What, what is something that you're working on right. you're excited, excited about? This is going to be my first year. I'm doing my uh, football camp back in Mississippi. Um, I'm also doing a charity softball game in Seattle. Um, I did one last year for the first time, um, and it was a great success. So I'm a Oh, let me know. Nice. I like both of those. Nice. I'm, I'm a softball king. Yeah. <laughs> You're not a thing. king. You're <laughs> I not a king. I that thing up out of there. <laughs> the first how, one how, I what? went, like, uh, was Richard Sherman did here. Mm-hmm. When I tell you it was, bro, <laughs> it was by far the best softball game ever. 
Dude, I'm talking about. You went up in Seattle? It was, was up in Seattle it too? It was sold out. Bro, it was like a yeah. football game. Yeah, yeah like, mine was sold out last year. Like, really? Sold yeah, out. Come, I didn't get an invite, out. but it's cool. I ain't going to hold you. Because <laughs> you can't play. First of all, I'm an athlete. <laughs> hey, DK know I can play now. He saw me hoop, so he knows I'm an athlete. You know I mean? He should have known anyway, but now he really <laughs> now he knows. Really know. Right, really, right, really know. know. There it okay, is. Yeah, check it out, right, man. There it is. Well, thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate you getting that. Appreciate you getting that. Get your popcorn ready podcast.